Here we are on Agramont Foreshore. My name is Brian Atkin. I'm a director of Wirral Archaeology, and I'm in charge of investigating what we think might be a Viking bloomery here actually on the foreshore itself. Vikings on the Wirral were first settled by Athelfleda, the Lady of the Mercians, in 902 AD. There are many Viking names, as a lot of people will know, uh, within uh, the, the North Wirral area. And there's evidence of Viking settlement all over the North Wirral, uh, not least of which uh, we investigated a potential Viking boat uh, in Mel's uh, early this year. And so this is just another, uh, another sample of what might be uh, relics of the Viking Age left here for us. You know, there's another spirit level here if you need it. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> We're investigating the site of an ancient ironworks, which may date back to Viking times or maybe even earlier. Over here, we have where the kiln itself was based, which is a big, tall, funnel-shaped structure. Uh, with a hole in the top where they used to pour the charcoal and the iron ore and they would take the softened iron ore out of the bottom of the kiln at the bottom here it is called a bloomery because you could not melt iron in those days what you could do is get it softened enough so you could beat it into shape into the very shapes that we wanted for farm implements and of course weapons over here we have a pillar which we believe used to stand at the side of the bloomery and then next to it is probably the iron working area where the softened iron was hammered into shape. At the moment what we're trying to do is establish the dimensions of the whole site by taking a lot of measurements so we can draw a plan view because the site stretches from here all the way down 18 meters down to the bottom there. Oh, they did, they did One of the reasons that we can identify this site is because all of the sandstone rocks here have tool marks on them. And we've investigated those tool marks to see whether we can identify the type of tools used, which we think are not that dissimilar to modern tools used by stone masons. And also we might be able to determine whether the person that's actually made the tool marks is left or right handed. At this moment in time we've got no date for this but there are various techniques which we're investigating which will enable us to establish a date. So this might have been the site where the Vikings decided to make their iron tools. This is a shoe. Spirit level now because it would it be goes all the way down to the clay base of the um, right. bloomery. So you can see all on this back wall well, here the marks yeah, yeah, of the tools yeah. that they well, used to cut sandstone. Yeah. So this is a, a pillar. It's worked yeah, stone yeah, all the way round. You can see the tool marks all the way round it. And so we believe this actually stood upright here where the iron was brought out of the bottom of the bloomery it's in its softened form so they could hammer it uh, into shape and you can still see some remnants of the slag so there's tremendous amounts of slag i'm not entirely sure yet whether we've got more than one bloomery here perhaps there was another bloomery actually in this site here so we would then have two two kilns in use and then we've got more tool marks along here to that end there all this wall has got tool marks on it as it goes down and so this was obviously in use for some purpose that we don't know of yet it might even be accommodation for, uh, for the people who ran the bloomery there are other bits and pieces upon the foreshore a bit further on which may or may not have been worked by the same people, for what purpose we don't know. But at the moment, I'm going to concentrate on this part of the site to see whether we can discover its date and its purpose and how the site was, was used. There are reasons why I think it's a Viking site. The construction doesn't look pre-Roman, and I don't believe that the Romans would have constructed, or the Romano-British would have constructed a bloomery at this site because we've got bloomeries scattered around Chester which were operated by the Roman administration in Chester, including the military administration. So there would be no need for a Roman bloomery in this position, which makes us think that this is probably a, 
a Viking bloomery. The interesting thing about this site is it's covered by high tide, by three to five meters of water. And obviously the bloomery couldn't have been in use under those conditions. So we know that the River Mersey didn't cover this site at the time that it was in use. Now, if that was in the 900s, in the early 10th century, then the River Mersey wasn't the same as it is now. The river must have been a bit further out towards where we're looking at it now in the mid channel. And this must have been dry land. So that's another plus for us in terms of trying to understand how the River Mersey actually changed its nature over the over the years to become the major waterway that it eventually did become. So this is our pillar. That was pin 200 and that was pin 100. So we've taken the measurements at each of these points to both of those pins. But somewhere this pillar stood on its end and it stood on its end somewhere in this area here. Yes. So if we can remove this sand, yeah. right, and dig down, we might be able to find out where this thing was erected by right, so. <laughs> Going all the way along there. Yeah, so it's absolutely a dead, straight, dead straight line. For real? Yeah. Did you see that, Rob? Oh. in line. Isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely in line. Yeah, cool. This has been a really good day. We've managed to get everything that I wanted to do for this weekend done. Now, as tomorrow doesn't look very good, what we're going to do is we're going to finish today and this will be our last visit site for this year. But it's been a really good day and I'm very pleased with the results that we've got. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, another good day. Uh, some really good progress. Nice to get some measurements done as well. So we've, um, we've been revisiting stones we've seen before. Uh, but we've some really detailed measurements of plane and positional measures, so we'll be able to go back and uh, do some analysis over the winter. Um, we've also got a huge amount of photographs and video footage. Um, so now it's a case of um, plan out the, the work for the spring, so really looking forward to it. It's been, it's been really good. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and the weather's held for us once again, so it's great. Side code again, Brian. Uh, I'll put the side codes on, don't worry. The location is here at Egremont Premier. Oh, just the bloomery. Okay. Okay. Never sorted the air. Uh...